Hey there, everyone. It's Bob Martin and Jason. He's, well, he left. Um, out the Nautilus dry docks. Um, we got a cylinder sent to us. And uh, it came with very little information other than it was fried. The email said something to the effect of, I fried it, please fix it. So I just wanted to detail what we do to diagnose an issue. Maybe this will be something interesting and maybe it'll be super simple, but we're gonna share it with you anyway. All right, surgery time. We already tipped the nuts off. We're gonna crack into the cylinder in the back. So this is the pump compartment. None of the servo arms were connected, which is interesting. So we got that side done. Oh, he went hardcore. He's got uh, hose clamps on there. We gotta get in the other side here and hook up, get our receiver in there. So this gentleman also sent his radio in because it was doing wonky things for him, but it turns out it wouldn't do wonky things for me. So that was a mystery that uh, maybe will never be solved. All right, let me get Jason to start hooking up the uh, receiver. And this particular unit, which, uh, which is interesting, is, is running an electronic speed controller for the pump as opposed to the OTW dive controller. So one thing to note with this, you got two electronic speed controllers. You got one that controls the motor and then you got one that controls the pump. Both have battery eliminator circuits in there. So they're both gonna try to feed power to the uh, receiver, which is not a good situation. So one or the other should be modified in such a manner that the um, center, the red wire is disconnected. So that's uh, channel five. We're just gonna take this and we're gonna grab my knife. We're just gonna disconnect the uh, positive. All right, so I've disconnected that positive lead and now we're gonna plug that back in to channel five. So now it's the motor speed controller that's gonna provide power to the receiver. Now, I would recommend the use of a separate battery eliminator circuit. This is gonna work fine, um, but it's probably not ideal. I, it's something that I would really recommend because this, uh, this Viper 15, uh, I think only runs two amps in the uh, battery eliminator circuit. So, not ideal. Nothing. Check the fuse. Fuse is shut. Fuse is blown. So we gotta replace the 10 amp fuse. Or uh, the camera. Focus, focus. There we go. Blown fuse. But for fun, we can connect power past the fuse. Nothing. No power, even when we bypassed the fuse. We're gonna power up the receiver All right, so our servos have power now. Pitch controller's working, servos working, servos working, servos working. Those aren't gonna work because they don't have power. It's just, I just powered up the receiver directly. So what I'm tending to think is that the battery eliminator component in the speed controller shot and it's not providing power to the receiver. So we're gonna to need to install a B E C, which we should do anyway. So we're replacing the old fuse holder, this gigantic monster thing with a, a smaller automotive, still standard automotive fuse holder with a, a 15 amp fuse in it. Look at that. All right. so. 
what have we done here? We've installed the new fuse. We have a brand new fuse in place. We need to connect. All right. Power comes in, goes there, goes out over there. We got five volt power coming in, going into the receiver. These are all connected. Our transmitter's on. All right. Nothing. All right, grab the multimeter. Where's the power? Well, let's um, eliminate the switch from the possibility. Hmm. All right, just to recap what we were doing there. We started with power on the outside, the furthest point on the outside, just as though it would be connected to the main drive battery. We got nothing. Bypass the power switch in case that was faulty, still nothing. Bypass the fuse in case that was the problem, still nothing. So, what we've got now is uh, this speed controller is not happy right now, and it's smoking hot. This battery's on fire. It's Listen. Yep. There, there, there must be a short somewhere. The CSC is smoking hot too. All right, so for fun, I think what we're gonna do is bypass the entire stern section of the boat altogether, disconnect the power, and uh, see if we can run power here. We'll see if we can get this speed controller going with a dose of juice. Go through the components one by one and see what's going on. All right, we got we got a little bit of progress here. We got the receiver talking to the, all of the servos. Okay, so that's all working. Now we just need to connect the power here. Let's see what happens. Then we pop the fuse. Short, right? There's a short, yep. Yeah. I have a hunch it's this electronic speed controller. So we're gonna well just like let, let's just see what happens when we eliminate it from the circuit. So now it's no longer part of the equation. Now let's try and plug it in and see if we blow a fuse. There! except it's not spinning the motor. Nothing. Both of these speed controllers are shot. This is what was blowing the fuse. And this is not putting out any voltage when it gets power. So it looks like we're replacing both electronic speed controllers. Oh! We're running low on stock too, darn it all. All right, brand new speed controllers put in. Now these are sub 10 electronic speed controllers. They're 40 amp rated. They've actually got um, on board three amp BECs, um, but we're not using them because we already put a standalone BEC in there. So I want you to notice that we have not as of yet tidied up cables, it's all loose. Inevitably, if you take the time to tidy up your cables, something will go wrong and you'll have to untidy them. So that's the last thing you need to do. Um, all right, so we have power. We got lights, we got lights. There's no smoke, no heat, nothing popped. Forward servo, rudder, dive planes. Speed controller. And pump. Huh. Everything works. Now, I'm just curious about this button. I wanna make, I wanna make sure this works. So let's um, put this, because we're bypassing it right now, let's put this 
in here. That worked. All right. Our job is done. Throw it in a box and call it good. So, what was it that was wrong? So, um, first off, the fuse was blown uh, inside the cylinder, the original fuse. We replaced that just because we didn't have any of those big bladed um, fuses, and it takes up less room. The electronic speed controller for the pump was shorting out internally. It got exceptionally hot, and it was blowing the fuse, so we had to swap that out. The electronic speed controller for the motor was not functioning. Now it was powering up and the, all of the light indicators were working properly, but it was not putting out any voltage to the motor when um, we initiated that with the transmitter. Replaced it, everything is fine. So two brand new electronic speed controllers, um, new fuse, new wires, yeah, I think we're in good shape now. We're gonna get it all tidied up, get it back to the owner, and uh, he can start throwing it in his boat. So, just wanted to show you a little bit about what goes into a small side project here at the dry docks and uh, some troubleshooting. As a hint, um, always start, I always start on the furthest outside of your cylinder in terms of if it's a power situation and work your way in, eliminating one component at a time. As soon as you uh, get something working, you know that it was the component that you just eliminated. That was your problem. For now, I'm gonna let you go. It's Jason and Bob, the RC sub guy at the NautilusDryDocks.com. Have a great day and we will catch you next time.